morning. Good morning. And welcome to University United Methodist Church on this Sunday before Thanksgiving. We're glad to see each and every one of you. My name is Teresa, and again, welcome to this place where we believe that whoever you are and wherever you happen to be on your faith journey or your life journey, you are welcome, you are beloved. As we um, get settled this morning, I want to remind you, as always, to find those registration pads in your pew so that we can have a record of your attendance this day. A special warm welcome to our visitors that are here. We're so glad that you chose to worship with us this day. And um, for all of you, there is blank space below the registration pad. If you have any joys or concerns that you want to share with me or the staff, um, that's a great way to communicate those. Again, we're glad you're here this day. I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able and invite Addie to come forward as Addie leads us in our call to worship. Gracious God, in this time of worship and wonder, story and song, into which you have gathered us, we marvel in the wondrous diversity of your human creation. Each of us, black, white, Latin, Asian, indigenous, and beyond, is an integral part of your magnificent creation. Each of us, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, atheist, and Beyond is an integral part of your magnificent creation. We call us into community just as we are. Each of us, with our bodies of diverse shapes, sizes, and abilities, is an integral part of your magnificent spectrum. You call us good, you call us whole and holy, just as we are. Each of us, of all sexualities and genders, all these ways of being and loving, is an integral part of your magnificent spectrum. We call us to share the gifts you gave us, just as we are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank
peace of Christ be with you. Let us share this sign of peace with one another. wonderful child care team who serve our kids with grace, friendship, and care. We know that with you, they will always be blessed. May they continue to be showered with your love. In all your grace, amen. What is coming up? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. But we've got Thanksgiving next week, right? That's right. What's your favorite, favorite Thanksgiving dish? Turkey, mashed potatoes, cranberry pie, there it is, turkey, yeah, turkey legs, I'm hearing all kinds of things, but mostly turkey, yeah, my favorite is pie, what about mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, yeah, mashed potatoes got a big, a big hooray, yeah, well, what do we, what do we do at Thanksgiving, what's something that we practice? We celebrate, we say, we give thanks, that's right. We eat turkey, yeah, yeah. Well, one of my favorite stories in the Bible about giving thanks is when, do you all remember the godly play story um, when Jesus fed the 5,000? Yeah, Genevieve knows for sure, kind of, yeah. Well, uh, what I love about that story is that Jesus said thank you before they had enough food. Right? Does anybody remember how many loaves of bread they had? One. I think there were five and two fishes. Right? And was that enough? Was it just one? It was just one. It was not enough. Oh, Genevieve, correct me. Thank you. It was just one. Was that enough? No. But Jesus said thank you. And then there was enough. Right? Yeah. So that's my favorite story, and I want you all to think next week about all of the things that you are grateful for. And I'm also going to read one of my favorite Thanksgiving poems, okay? It's the best. Oh, go, John. All right. I am a gratitude monster, and I'm small as monsters go. But when it comes to finding blessings, there's something you must know. My eyes are round and big, and blessings I can see. If you'll help me look for blessings too, then grateful you will be. 
I found that when I'm grateful, life doesn't seem so bad. Despite the trials and hard things, finding blessings makes me glad. So let us look together and count our blessings, you and I. And if we truly look, there are blessings you can spy. That's my favorite poem. So when you go to childcare, if you go over there, we can make some um, gratitude monsters. Does that sound fun? Okay, good boy. All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for all your gifts. Thank you for reminding us that we have all we need. Thank you for reminding us that we Amen. Amen. Alright, we can walk over to child care together. Join me in the prayer for illumination. Loving God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. That is, as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Scripture reading Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1 through 11. When you come into a land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle on it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to him, Today I declare that to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hands and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Arabian was my ancestor. He was a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. He had brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I'm bringing first of all the fruit of the ground that you, the Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you in your house. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks to be God. God. Mm. Thank you so much, Rivers, and thank you, Abby, and um, Jack, I know will be sharing in worship later, and all of these children um, are here with us participating in worship, and I have to say that the scriptures and the prayers and the calls to worship, they had some big words in it, and they that's why we delegated, actually. Um, they, they did so, such great, great work, I'm so grateful for them. Um, this Thanksgiving, I'm also filled with gratitude for our children's director, Jillian, for these children's sermons where um, she just brings new concepts to life, um, saying thank you um, before we eat, and then it's enough. Um, what a gift that word was. And as I listened to the children's time, I, I saw so many faces in the choir and heard movement out here that you all wanted to go make gratitude monsters, right? <laughs> She was like, we're going to make gratitude monsters next door. And I could, feel, I could see it in your eyes that that light was really appealing. Um, but you're stuck here, I guess. Actually, we could go. I'm glad you're all here today. 
Um, would you join with me in prayer? Let's pray. God of love, we do give you thanks for the joy of this day, for your holy and living word and its meaning in our lives still today. And we ask, oh God, in these moments now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Amen. So this passage that Rivers read from Deuteronomy is a traditional scripture reading for the Thanksgiving week. We have speeches from Moses as he is delivering a word to the people of God just at the end of his, Moses' life. These people, these people of God, have been through a lot in their journey so far. Moses has led them through the wilderness. The people have been enslaved and oppressed. They have wandered and they have been homeless. The promise of home is finally within their grasp. And as the people face this reality, God speaks through Moses the words that we heard read today. The words are a call to humility, reminding the people that they have lived through difficult times, challenging times, and yet by the grace of God have survived. The words are a call to give thanks with instructions to express their gratitude to God by giving and serving others. Well, friends, I have to share with you and confess that as I come to this text today, I struggle with this section of the Bible. Moses and the people of God are entering what is called the promised land. It is about settling and land possession. As an example, some of us may have grown up hearing stories around this time of the year about a friendly meal shared between pilgrims and Native Americans, only to learn later that there is more to that story, isn't there? Today, violence rages yet again in Gaza with a staggering number of people killed, many of them children. And at the center of this conflict is land possession. We humans have a complicated and troubled relationship with land, which leads to complicated and troubled relationships with other people. Far too often we elevate the possession of land over the value of human life, and the result is violence, destruction, and death. Christ have mercy. Indeed, there is so much work to be done in the name of justice and peace. I know you know that well. That is why you commit to a place like this. Well, I want to share with you this morning a story. It is a story that is told in the Jewish mystic tradition, and it's called Tikkun Olam. Tikkun Olam, in Jewish, is a story about the birth of the world, and it begins like this. It says that when the world was born, there was an original light. And then, when the world was born, that light shattered into many, many, many different pieces of light. And those, those little pieces of light, they landed everywhere, in everything, in everyone and then humans were created and humans were created to bring all of those light pieces back together again tikkun olam is literally translated repairing the world and the world this work of repairing the world is to look for the light to point to it to gather it and bring it together again when you do that, you help repair the world. You help bring a little more compassion and kindness, a little more healing and peace. <laughs> now, I know, I know that today this, this notion can sound lofty, like some far-fetched fantasy way of thinking, what I sometimes think of as woo-woo speaking. <laughs> but you know, friends, it's really a very practical notion. Because what you do is you look for the light right where you are. And you 
see it, you touch it, you gather it together. We live at a time in our history when it does seem very clear what's broken, right? Our political systems, our economic policies, many, perhaps most of our major institutions, these don't all seem to function as effectively as they did decades ago, and it can be a terrifying time in which to live. But we are called as the people of God to bear the light, to gather the light. We are called to repair. I think part of the challenge here about all of this is that our news today comes to us so efficiently from all corners of the world at all times of the day. And that's not all bad. It's good to be informed citizens. But after some time of constant intake, we can become burned out, can't we? Sad, horrific things happen in far away places that we can't possibly completely fix. Change the shape of the economy, reverse climate change altogether, stop a war, we face these macro, which is to say big challenges, and it's understandable that we can fall into despair because how on earth are we supposed to make a difference? Well, the trick, the answer is to zoom in closer, to ask the question closer to home. What can we do in our own little corner of the earth to bring a little more peace, a little more joy, a little more compassion? I see you doing that. I didn't. Um, I didn't ask permission, but I'm going to um, call out our late leader, um, Barbara Mason, and I joined together with Chad Seals. Dr. Seals is a um, professor at the University of Texas, but also a member here, and he invited us to a meeting at the UT campus on food insecurity. Some of us have been talking and praying about how are we as a church called to make a difference in the lives of UT students who go without enough food week to week. There are already so many people working for good on these matters, and I look forward to the ways that we will continue to pray and um, imagine how our response might be. Some things are in the works, but if you're interested in being a part of that, you can reach out to me. You'll be hearing more soon. Well, I share with you this day that in my study of the scriptures, over all these years, over and over, I see this persistent message of God, God calling us to look after those who are in need, to stand on the side of peace, to work for a more just society. We take, for example, the prophet Isaiah. He was living in an age when war and conquest was glorified, and yet he described an era in the future where nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation again, and neither shall they learn war anymore. And then we take today God's word spoken through Moses. He tells the people to remember in order that they might in humility know that even in difficult times, it was by the grace of God that they survived. And when the people of God are told to give of their first fruits as an offering to God, it is so that the powerless among them can have access to those offerings, the resident aliens, the orphans, the widows. Theologian William Yarkin goes on to write about this practice of giving. It's not about expressing thanks because you are happy, it's not about saying thank you, God, because things are going right with me and all is right with the world. Instead, gratitude towards God is about helping those who are marginalized, joining in God's work. He goes on to say these words. In Deuteronomy, we confess that God acted on behalf of the powerless, that God acts for a further purpose that the redeemed might themselves act on behalf of the powerless in the same way that God has acted, blessing them with abundance. In short, God continues to redeem the power, powerless, but through the agency of the people of God, 
when we choose to be faithful. Now, if you continue reading the passage from Deuteronomy where, where we've left off for today, we will sadly quickly discover that the people of God fail to obey. They do not give thanks. They do not care for the marginalized. They do not always choose life. Once again, when I zoom out and I take in the world's woes, I am dismayed of our choices as humans. But when I zoom in closer and look at my little corner of the world, yes, there are still hard things. But zooming in also gives me the eyes to see up close people who every day are living their life for the sake of others. Every day. I see people who wake up and go to work striving to be the best person that they can be. I see people who are walking humbly and doing justice and loving mercy. I see you. If you find yourself in these days living with some amount of existential despair, the anecdote is to focus closer, doing what you can to see the light, doing what you can to be the light by serving and by giving. A Jewish scholar provided commentary on a beloved passage from the prophet Micah. He writes these words, and I want to leave them with you today. He writes, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justice now. Love mercy now. Walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete all the work, but neither are we free to abandon it. So bear the light. Continue to point to it, to gather it up, to repair the world one moment, one step, one day at a time. Amen. Thank you. 
this time, let us bring our joys and concerns to God, and I would like to share with you that our um, church member Desmond um, died last week, uh, this past week, and the family is planning to have the celebration of life um, the week after Thanksgiving, so you will receive more information soon. <coughs> So as we go to God in our prayer today, let us remember that one kid and the family, and also uplift those who find some empty seats around their Thanksgiving tables this year, as we trust God is with us and God hears our faith. Now I invite Jack to come forward to lead us in prayer. God, there are days when we are so grateful, when we are anxious or angry, when we feel alone, when we do not understand what is happening in the world or with our neighbors, when the news is bleak, confusing. God, we struggle to feel grateful, but this Thanksgiving we choose gratitude. We choose to accept life as a gift from you, as a, and as a gift from the unfolding work of all creation. We choose to be grateful for the earth from which our food comes for the water that gives life, and for the air that we all breathe. We choose to thank our ancestors, those who came before us, grateful for their stories and their struggles. And we receive their wisdom as a continuing gift for today. 
and chooses your families and friends with new eyes. Appreciating and accepting them for who they are. We are thankful for our homes, whether humble or grand. God, this is Thanksgiving. We do not give thanks. We choose it. We will make this choice of thanks with courageous hearts, knowing that it is humbling to say thank you. We choose to see your sacred generosity, aware that we live in an infinite circle of gratitude, that we are all guests at a hospitable table around which gifts are passed and received. We will not let anything opposed to love take over this table. Instead, we choose grace, free and unmerited love, the giftedness of life everywhere. In this choosing and in the making, we will pass gratitude onto the world. Amen. Now join us in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, This time I invite ushers to come forward as we prepare our gift to God. Let us stand. With joyful hearts, we offer ourselves and gifts to God. May our minds bless those who are in need, who work, and to speak home. This 
morning I share with you that it has been my great joy and blessing to serve as a staff liaison to Open Door Ministry. But, the, but these days, the needs are growing and ongoing as we serve the increased number of uh, unhoused neighbors in our community. So this year on Giving Tuesday, the Tuesday right after Thanksgiving, we will have some opportunity to give our special gifts to uh, Fig Leaf Clothing Closet. So you will have more information in the e-connection coming this week. Thank you for your continued support, so support for this ministry and your generosity. And for all our gifts, we give God thanks.
Amen. Um. 